I talked in a previous video about how to solve inequalities, but now we're going to talk about how to solve inequality word problems. So let's start here with this first one. Peter begins his kindergarten year able to spell 10 words. He is going to learn to spell two new words every day. Write an inequality that can be used to determine how many days D it takes Peter to be able to spell at least 75 words. Use this inequality to determine the minimum number of whole days it will take him to be able to spell at least 75 words. So um, what we're going to do is, even though they kind of tell us this here, it's, it's good still to write a let statement, even though it's sort of spelled out for us in the problem. They want us to use the variable D, so I'll stick with D here like they have in the problem. Um, you know, if, the, if it's not a big deal, you can use X and Y. Um, so it says, write an inequality that could be used to determine how many days it takes Peter to be able to spell at least 75 words. So let's let D equal the number of days. We'll say the number of days needed to spell, oops, spell 75 words. Okay, so we'll let D be the number of days needed to uh, spell 75 words. So if we go from here now, let's kind of turn this into an inequality. So first off, it gives us this kind of total here, 75. It says at least 75 words. So I'm going to sneak the 75 over here, and I'm going to try to get something to, to equal this 75, or in this case, we're going to have an inequality, but you'll see here in a second. So I'm going to put my 75 over here, and I'm going to try to create something so that we're getting to the point where Peter is able to spell 75 words. Now, bear with me. I'm going to make this an equal sign for now. I'll fix it in a second. So first off, Peter already knows how to spell 10 words. So let's throw that in here. He already knows how, how to spell 10. So that gives us you know 10 less words that he has to spell. He's also going to learn to spell two new words every day. So that means that for each day, D, he's going to spell two new words. That'll give us plus 2D. So 10 words already plus two words per day. And then we have that equal 75. Now let's fix that equal sign, though, because we want an inequality here. Now the other way that I do this, sometimes I'll start with the equal sign, but then we'll fix it. So this says, um, if we let this be the side, this is the side that Peter, these are the words that Peter can kind of spell. This side I would call like our, our limiting factor, our limit here, where it kind of tells us he needs to get to at least this much or at most this much. And if we look at the problem here, this one he needs to spell at least 75 words. So if we want him to spell at least 75 words, the amount that Peter has to be able to spell has to be greater than or equal to 75. He could have exactly 75 or more words spelled and he's okay. All right, so now we can go ahead and solve away here. So if we subtract the 10 over to the other side, we'll get 2D is greater than or equal to 65, and then if we divide each side here by 2, I didn't divide by a negative, so I'm not going to flip that sign around, we get that D is greater than or equal to 32.5, okay? So 32 and a half days. Now, not going to be an exactly perfect way to do this. Um, so it says he's going to learn, and it wants to know the minimum number of days. So let's assume that he requires a full day to be able to learn those words. And we'll say that this is our inequality here. But what it throws in here is it says, use this inequality to determine the minimum number of whole days it will require for him to spell at least 75 words. And if I'm looking for whole days, 32 days wouldn't be enough, because if we plug 32 in for D, you would notice if you plug that in that that would be not greater than or equal to 75. What we're going to have to do here is round this up and it's good to write a little blurb at the end of your word problem. We could write something that, you know, it would take him at least 33 days. We're going to have to round that up. Otherwise, if we plugged in 32 for the nearest whole day, we would be a little bit short. So it's going to take Peter at least 33 days to be able to learn all those words. Now let's jump down here. We'll do the next one. So uh, Chelsea has at least $45 to spend at the fair. 
She spends $20 on admission and $15 on snacks. She wants to play a game that costs 65 cents per game. Write an inequality to find the maximum number of times X Chelsea can play the game. Using this inequality, determine the maximum number of times she can play the game. So let's go ahead. We'll start again with let. They're using X in this one, so I'll use X. Let X equal. And again, they kind of tell us the let statement in this one. If we look down here, it's going to be, we're going to let X be, um, the maximum number of times Chelsea can play the game. Okay, so we're going to let X be the maximum number of times Chelsea can play the game. She can play the game. Now, when we're writing this inequality, we're going to get any number of times that she'll be able to play the game. Um, but usually the most important number is what's her max, and that's where the inequality uh, will come in here in a little bit. So, all right, so Chelsea has $45 to spend at the fair. Right there, again, I'm seeing kind of a total, kind of like this 75 up here. That's how much total she has to be able to spend. And there's multiple ways to do these, but I'll, I'll set it up this way. So I'm going to take this $45 that she has to spend, and I'm going to write it over here kind of the total amount of money she has to work with. Now, what we want is the amount she can spend, so we'll call this, um, let's call this the Chelsea can spend side. So I'll abbreviate this. This is our Chelsea spend side. And we'll call this our limit over here. She's limited to have $45 in her pocket. That's all she's got. So right now, she's already spent 20, all right? and she spent 15 more on snacks and she wants to play this game that costs 65 cents per game if x is the number of games she could play then we should make this a 0.65 x because if we take 0.65 the cost of each game times the number of games that should get us the total cost for all the games she can have and if we add all three of these costs up at the fair that should give us our kind of limiting factor of 45 so that's kind of the maximum money she can spend because that's all she has. So let's also think about you know what way this sign is going to go. Again, it's not going to be just an equals. It's going to be a inequality. And the amount that Chelsea can spend has to be less than or equal to 45. Because if she spent more than $45, well, she'd be in debt. She wouldn't have that money to borrow. So it'd be less than or equal to 45 for that one. OK, so now we're going to go ahead and solve this one as well. So we're going to take this and combine our like terms first on the left side, which will go ahead and give me a 35 plus 0.65x is less than or equal to 45. And then I'm just going to subtract this 35 to the other side. So that'll give me 0.65x is less than or equal to 10. And then if we go ahead and we divide 0.65 in, we're going to get, you know, something that's not an even number, but that's okay. We have x is less than or equal to, I'm going to round this just to the nearest tenth for now. We'll make this 15.4. Okay, and then we'll kind of talk about, uh, we'll talk about this here in a second. So 15.4 would be about what this solves to, but we're going to write a little sentence to clear this up uh, in just a second. So um, if we're looking for a maximum number of times that Chelsea can play the game, first off, we know that it's impossible for her to play, you know, to pay for 0.4 games. She's either going to play another game or she's not going to play another game. So if we think about this as our kind of a, a limit here that she's allowed to, to spend, then she's not allowed to, we, we can't round this one up like we did on the last one because she's not allowed to spend play over 15 games. If we plug 16 in for X here, we would get something that's not a true statement. So what I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is go back and we'll say that she can play this game at most. So she can play at most 15 games. Okay, so she can play this game at most 15 times, which will allow her to play at most 15 games. And that'll kind of make sense of, of our solution there. Okay, so again, the idea here is first, set, set it up, solve it, figure out which way your inequality is going, and don't feel like you have to figure out which way this is going right away. So it's okay to put an equal sign as long as you come back and change it and think about what it means. Both of these were or equal to's because she was allowed to spend exactly $45. 
just like here, this person was allowed to spell exactly 75 words. There may not be our equal to's though on all the problems if, if it's not allowed to be equal to that total. Um, and then also, once we get the solution, let's make sense of it and write a little blurb like we did on each of these here. Okay, and that's just a little introduction to solving inequalities word problems.